Well, very good morning to you, Desiree, and of course to our SABC viewers, and happy Youth Day, uh, might I say to you all. Uh, proceedings haven't started here outside the Eitzich uh, World School in Centurion, and of course, uh, what I can say is that a number of EFF members have uh, started uh, trickling in. If I'll just step out of the frame before we actually speak to our guest, uh, so that my colleagues could actually show you what's going on uh, behind me. Uh, there you have it. Uh, some EFF uh, members or EFF leaderships uh, have already started arriving here. You've got EFF members that are close to the stage just singing there uh, ahead of uh, that much anticipated address by uh, the party leader, uh, Mr. Julius Malem. But I'm actually joined by the Secretary General of the EFF, Mr. Marshall Glamini, who will actually take us through today and today's proceedings. Thank you so much for joining us on SABC News. Uh, just marking 45 years, um, you know, after the Soweto uprising, you have an incident where a learner last week was manhandled for wearing EFF regalia on career day. And it seems as if the youth of this generation actually finds resonance with the class of 1976. Uh, morning and morning to the viewers at home. Look, no, nothing has changed. Uh, the current regime is a... Uh, is the one that has allowed this situation. You would know that uh, from the history of this country. First, it was our skin. Uh, they had an issue with the racist whites. Then it moved from the skin. It was our language. Today, is how we dress. Because this learner who, uh, who was violently removed from this school came here on a career day wearing the EFF regalia, showing his aspirations of being a future activist of the EFF. And then for that, that was his scene that is wearing the, the, the EFF regalia. That's why I'm saying nothing has changed. They're doing it all over the country. We saw what happened in Whitbank, uh, all over the country. So we, we are here to, to stand our ground, to say uh, it's enough. The, uh, this country belongs to us. Each and every street belongs to the EFF. And we are here to say those races that violently manhandled that boy, if they've got capacity and they know their story, they must come here today and, and see what's going to happen because we are past the stage of talking against races who have made it their commitment that they hate black people and they're going to violently illiterate black people and we are saying enough is enough. So we are here to commemorate the, the June uh, 16, 1976 heroes and heroines who stood firm even that time against a racist, brutal regime. So I was here to, to remember them, to honor them, but significantly for this address, we are here to tell these ones around here that uh, enough is enough and we are not going to sit around the table with them. If they want to bring violence, they must bring it to us here today and we'll respond with violence because time for talking is over now. Mr. Lamini, um, in, in response of the school and the SGB, um, we've heard that uh, they say instead it wasn't, you know, an incident of racism. Instead, they had said that the boy, I mean, uh, you know, is, is insolent, for lack of better words. Uh, he's, he's got a bad history with the school. I think he's got about 600 demerit points. And this is their argument. No, the boy remains a student. The boy is supposed to be taken uh, if there's issues of DC. You take him through like a, like a student. Even this country went uh, corporal punishment. But that was not even corporal punishment. That was a racist act, violent act to remove a, a, a young man from the school. And, and the reality is that it was because of how he was dressed. And, and, and we, have, we have established that. So it's, there's, there's no such thing. We've written to the school. They've not responded to us. So it's got nothing to do with the discipline of a, of a child. That's not, if, if racism is how they discipline our children, then we've got a big problem in this country. Because that's not how you discipline children. Even if it's ill discipline, there are processes in the school. You don't violently remove a, a student. And the other black security who try to speak. But a racist white one. Because he's, he knows that inherently is uh, violence. It, uh, he's in charge of violence, and he must unleash that violence against black people. And he, he knew that. Let me do what I'm used to do. And we're saying that won't happen anymore. That's why we are here today. And in, under the democratic dispensation, I mean, 45 years after the Soweto 1976 uprising, the youth of this day still face a number of challenges. I mean, COVID has also ex exacerbated the situation. You have a situation where we've got 63.30 of our youth being unemployed. You've got youth who want to go to school but don't have funding. You've got youth who face, you know, issues of substance and drug abuse. I mean, what is the solution for young, you know, young people within our country? Look, our problem is that because we've got... Uh 
uh, uh, racist apologies who pretend as if they are government. Cowards who are running us in this country. The land is not back. The economy is still controlled by the racist uh, in, in, in this country. That's why a majority of young people are unemployed. Even if they were told to go to school, they went to school, they graduated, but they still find themselves on the streets looking for jobs because we've got a useless government that is, uh, that is running this country. So the only solution is the EFF because we are the only party that is speaking to these matters without fear or favor. And we are saying we demand our land, we demand participation in the economy. The economy must belong to the majority of our people. And, and that's the only change. There's no other hope in this country except the EFF. So young people, they must uh, stop being lazy and being cowards at home. They must take on to the streets. They must join the EFF because we are the only solution to this country. The ANC, they failed their apologies. You can see even now. Their president is captured by the Stern Bosch boys. He, he just represents them in everything that he, he does. He, he, he represents the white, uh, the white interests, and we are the only one who can provide solutions here. Mr. Lamine, we've got one minute left. Uh, just briefly, uh, yesterday the country was put under lockdown level one, uh, but the EFF in a statement saying that they, you are going to continue with your political uh, political activities. The date of the elections has been set to the 27th of October. The EFF has been vocal, saying that listen, we will continue with our work because I mean it's not feasible for uh, the country to go to elections but I mean just explain to us more please. No, we're fully aware uh, of uh, what the COVID is doing into this country and they uh, were speaking to our members and supporters that at all times they must be safe social distancing and make sure that they follow all the health protocols but we're not going to listen to uh, nonsensical uh, regulations from Syria. We are continuing with our political program. He has declared an election battle. He said let's go to elections. Even when we say to him is not scientifically correct. Uh, the evidence is there. The country is on stage three. How do you force to go to elections? Because he's obsessed with power. So we have agreed that we're going to join him on that battle and he's not going to call us into a battle and dictate to us how to fight. We're going to fight in our own way. So our political programs are continuing until the 27th of October, uh, the day of victory. So we're not going to listen to any nonsensical regulations that are coming from him. We are proceeding. Thank you so much, Jose. That was uh, Marshall Damin, I mean, the Secretary General of the EFF. I neither want to add or subtract to what he said, but what I can tell you is that we will be speaking to uh, the learner who was manhandled by that security shortly. Of course, proceedings will start any time from now on, and as the SABC, we promise to bring you uh, everything related to June 16, the commemoration here of the EFF outside the 8th Sikhur School in Centurion. Back to you in studio, Desiree. Natasha, thank you so much for bringing us up to speed. Of course, we'll be watching developments there.